Good morning and welcome back to Shirai Show. Today is October 2nd, 2010 and the time is 10 minutes to 5 a.m. I have pressing issues on, upon my heart. I'm unable to sleep. And this is regarding identity theft. I had to step out of my circumstances for a few years to understand how this elaborate scheme worked. And I think I have wrote enough documentation regarding how the theft issue works. However, some things are not quite clear. And it was difficult to come up with the proof, but the proof is basically uh, within the government agencies. So, for example, you have a person, Jane Doe. Jane Doe from the Social Security Administration was signed a Social Security number 1234567.9. Well, Jane Doe has been working many years, well educated, and she has a, a degree, a bachelor's degree in accounting. So, someone decided because of her credentials and her education, it was very useful to benefit other individuals. But you have to keep in mind it's not Jane Doe's fault that someone else didn't complete schools or involved in their life circumstances. Maybe Jane Doe chose the correct path. But in the ideologies of the individuals who are, are facilitating an advocacy behind the identity theft, they don't see it that way. They believe in spreading the wealth or redistribution of wealth. So they take Jane Doe's personal information and they, they create hybrids off of her social security number, individuals who are in need. And these are people who are lacking education, who have been convicted of a felony, or they have um, no illegal entrance into the United States. And they will use James Doe's social security number to obtain jobs, to get employment benefits, and other driver's license as well is one of the incentive of piggybacking off of someone else's identity. And for many years I couldn't figure out what why all these things were happening to me. And basically the way it works is once they target the individuals, like I said, out of that Jane Doe social security number, they may create hundreds or millions of hybrids, identity theft fees, for whatever reason, under Jane Doe's social security number. And also, they can, they can commit criminal activity, which they will use Jane Doe's identification of goods to get out of jail free card. So what I mean by that, however they got the information, to obtain someone's personal information is not as difficult as you think. Basically, they could have someone sign an affidavit, and they have to have two witnesses, and from there, they can go and get uh, information on you. So, basically, I don't care for affidavits. It's just too easy for people to obtain information. They can get use a library card. Uh, for a good example, if I wanted to collect, let's say, benefits, food stamps and housing voucher, but I, I don't have the proper information and I have a criminal background or a legal entrance or whatever the other reason may be, all I have to do is basically uh, target an individual Go get a library card. Say, I lost a library card. It's just that easy. And then go to uh, Health and Human Services and collect benefits. Then you got two pieces of fee, two pieces of documentation. And then go to the Social Security Administration and, and receive a, basically a Social Security card. It's not that complicated. <laughs> I mean, 
me, your information is out there. It's easy to obtain. But in, uh, I have learned Social Security no longer accept library cards as one of the documentation to obtain Social Security uh, number. But anyway, it is really interesting how elaborate this identity theft issue is and how devastating it is on the taxpayers. And not only that, it has created all these deficits, and I believe it's in the trillions. We are basically don't understand what is really happening. And basically, they, what they did to Jane Doe was the ones who are employed under her social security number. Well, basically, what they did was they filed taxes. But Jane Doe doesn't know. And see, and Jane Doe is now being affected because now she can't find the original owner of that social security number, can't find work. She's using her life savings to stay afloat until she are devastated. She loses everything, her home, her life, pretty much. And they call that bum you out the system. When they hijack your identity, they usually target you for a purpose of bumming you out of all government, federal, local, and state system. In other words, they really put you in a very compromised position where you when you can't find no recourse or no one will believe you, even though the evidence is in their documentation. So what I mean by that, they will file taxes, and the only way I can prove it is I had to go through the back door and request a report of earnings. And when they are employed, they sit there and they got really bold, these identity of these, and some of them have filed with the IRS under my Social Security number or Jane Doe's Social Security number. And they weren't supposed to. But some of them got extremely cocky and felt that they can get away with it. Not only that, they have a home address, a phone number, everything is listed. And where they're employed. So this is kind of a elaborate scheme that is affecting not only me, it's affecting, I, I would say, probably a, almost a million people one way or the other and it is quite interesting how elaborate the scheme is and so basically you're going to get bombed out of the system you're going to lose everything you have and you're going to become homeless because of their advocacy and their ideology of redistributing wealth meaning I'm going to take from you because you had a good life, you went to school, you did what's right, but I got all these folks who didn't. So I'm going to take from you and allocate it over to all these other people. So therefore, you're going to be diminished, downtrodden, and they're going to be lifted up. But you didn't cause their poor decision making. But you're being punished for their mistakes. And it is unbelievable the amount of evidence I have found through this investigation regarding identity theft. And some, you have people that are housed in some agencies that are true advocates. They don't believe that they're harming you. They don't see that this is affecting you. All they see is that I'm going to help all the benefit all these other people by taking what you have and redistributing to them, even though I know they don't deserve it. So it's okay. It's, it's kind of like this ideology. Okay, sweetheart, you're a teenager. You screwed up your life. Now you're older. You realize your mistakes. But that's okay because we have an accountant position. We have a doctor, we have a lawyer identity you can hop on. You could be anything you want to be and you don't even have to go to school for it. 
We have it all clustered for you. So we're gonna be, we're gonna help you move up, even though you don't know how to read and write or do arithmetic. But we will help you go right ahead of the line without you even going to school for it. And another thing I have found what is happening under my identity is that people getting educated. So I got all this degrees under my identity that these people went back to school for. So this opening up this uh, my identity as a pot and everybody who wants to choose to jump on board you could be anything you want to be under this social security number and, and you can go get a job. So that's basically what's been happening with this identity set issue. But everybody's in denial and trying to make it look like I'm crazy or I'm making all of this up. And it's, it is not made up. It is all in the details and it is easy to find. This is Shirai and I'm signing off this morning.